uh, the uh, asymptotic behavior of the n through of unity, then we need to do something. Oh, so um, in this technique, it is better uh, to assume that xi is not uh, 2 pi i. Yes, yes. So we use this one. Um, this is again, uh, um, this is what? Uh, yes, um, this is Ga Gaussian integral. So um, I, I think uh, uh, this is similar to the uh, one that I uh, showed yesterday. And if we replace alpha with this one and p with this one and, see, and then uh, choose uh, the line like this, this is just this line, then uh, the summation, so here uh, we insert integration here. But by doing this, um, the summation is over C, so we can put C inside the integration. So we have this form. So uh, the sum over C is just sum of over E to the uh, Cx. So we can calculate it uh, uh, um, easily. So the, this is the result. And then, so uh, the summation vanishes just introducing, but by introducing uh, this kind of integral. So uh, the difference between the two sigma is like this. But the first one vanishes because C, uh, C is a line uh, passing through the origin, and this integrand is an odd function. So this cancels, and this, this integral vanishes. So uh, the, this is just the integration of this one. And uh, uh, we want to apply uh, the, um, we want to know the uh, asymptotic behavior of this integral. And uh, to do that, we'd like to apply the saddle point method that I described before. So C, once again, C is just uh, a line like this. And uh, we'd like to find uh, the, uh, the vanishing point of the derivative of this uh, function. But the zero of the derivatives is not on the line C. So we want to change uh, the, uh, this one. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, we want to change the integration by, change, by changing the uh, contour. So, so this is C. And uh, uh, the maximum point of this one, or the vanishing point of the derivative of this, is somewhere here. Uh, so we like to change the line of integral to this one, C tilde. By um, introducing, uh, by, by using uh, the residue theorem, so this one is equal to this, and uh, there's a uh, poles here. Okay, so the uh, integral along this one is the integral along this red line uh, plus the uh, residues coming from these. Poles. Yes. Now the, uh, the the integral becomes this one, and uh, we change the variable, the uh, x into y. Then the this integral is again the integral along the c, but the integrand uh, is different, and this is very simple. One and we can apply the saddle point method uh, because um, here, so the so this this is for for large n this is the essential part and this is ex exponential to the minus something times y squared 
So uh, the graph looks something like that. So here's the uh, zero. So this takes uh, the maximum at the origin. And if n grows, it grows much, much bigger. So the integration is just near the origin. And essentially, uh, the, uh, so uh, as I showed yesterday, uh, we can calculate this one uh, by using the saddle point method. And then the integration becomes just this function as uh, n goes to infinity. Okay. So we have this formula for the color zones of the, uh, this torus knot. Uh, remember that the first one comes from the integration, and uh, the rest comes from the uh, residues. So, and the k runs over all these poles. So it depends on guzai, because uh, the two pi two a plus one guzai is here, and the poles should be between two lines. And uh, uh, so. Look at this. And uh, uh, the first term uh, without n is just coincides with the um, uh, Alexander, one over the Alexander polynomial of the uh, torus knot um, evaluated as exponential of Kuzai. Are you using this Melvin Morton result? Um, no, no, no. That's no, 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 no. Um, let me see. Uh, this is analytic, but Melvin Morton is um, algebra. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yes. Yeah. So um, um, let me see. So if you see, um, let me see. If Guzai is small, close to the origin, there's no k meaning that uh, there's no n terms. So uh, the Jn converges to 1 over uh, Alexander. This is the result of uh, Galafridis and Lay. They call it analytic version of Melvin mode. So uh, I will uh, say that. Uh, So here's the theorem by uh, Garu. And Tan De, that if Guzai is small, uh, sorry, for any knot, there exists uh, some. Uh, uh, yes, so if the absolute value of Guzai is small, uh, how small depends on the knot. But anyway, then the color Jones converges limit. <coughs> the limit of the color Jones itself exists, and the limit is delta of k evaluated at uh, Guzai. So delta is the um, normalized Alexander polynomial. Normalized mean uh, delta k evaluated at 1 is 1, and uh, it is symmetric. In the case of knots, um, uh, this determines uh, the Alexander polynomial without any ambiguity. So, and um, um, Melvin Morton conjecture, Melvin Morton Rosansky, and uh, it was proved by Barnatan and Garfaridis, states that uh, if we um, there is another, an, another way to uh, pick up the Alexander from the color Jones. 
Uh, it is, uh, do you remember the <laughs> precise statement? It's like in a root of unity. There's no root of unity. No root of unity. But um, uh, so uh, let me see. Combine, if we combine n and uh, q cleverly, then we get uh, the Alexander. Uh, I, I don't remember the statement. So um, Melvin Bolton is a kind of algebraic um, uh, statement. And uh, uh, this is analytic statement. And uh, uh, this, is, this is true for uh, any knot. And uh, you see that this gives another proof for the uh, theorem by Garfalidis and uh, Tande. Because if um, Guzai is small, there's no k. Okay. But um, if Guzai is uh, big, not so small, then these residue terms uh, appear. And uh, they appear n. So and if sk Guzai, the, um, if sk of Guzai over Guzai has positive real part, then this grows exponentially. So, um, and, and uh, I'll tell you later, if Guzai is 2 pi i, we can uh, use this uh, calculation. Uh, you, you can just follow this calculation and use, uh, what, how do you say? L'Hopital's rule? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, kind of L'Hopital's rule. So you can, if we want to, uh, take um, the limit where guzai goes to 2 pi i because the denominator goes to 0. So if you want to take the limit, uh, you can use L'Hopital's rule. And then you can differentiate. So uh, it, it works in the case of uh, where guzai is 2 pi i. And you can see that there is no uh, exponential term. And uh, it, uh, in the case of uh, 2 pi i, then there's no term here, and uh, the only this term, and you can see that uh, it only grows uh, polynomially. Uh, I, I think there's no uh, exponential. I, I, I forgot. A anyway, uh, um, in a similar way, uh, you can prove the uh, volume conjecture for the torus knot. And uh, Yes, this result is due to uh, Hikami and myself. Okay. So uh, this is um, a kind of rather easy calculation, just an uh, easy application of uh, residue theorem and uh, uh, easy part of uh, saddle point method. So um, now uh, the problem, our uh, problem of topology is to consider what are, what they are, what are the um, uh, this s and tau. These are uh, this corresponds to the Chan Simons, and this corresponds to the uh, uh, Rydemeister torsion, and uh, I will describe what they are. Okay. So first, uh, the uh, Chan Simons invariant. So uh, I will. So this is. The definition of um, the Chan Simons invariant, but uh, don't ask me. <laughs> so uh, this is just um, okay. I, I will read. Uh, let M be a closed three manifold and XM be the SL2C character variety of M. So uh, a Kate described. Uh, and small s, small c s sub M is a function from the character variety to C modulo integers, which is called the SL2C Chan Simons invariant. Uh, by definition, so to define it, we need a representation of uh, the closed three manifold into SL2C. And uh, A is, um, so this one, uh, small SL2C is uh, the corresponding D algebra. And A is a, a D algebra valued one form on the closed manifold M. Uh, that such that A defines a flat connection on M cross SL2C. And uh, it is well known, but I don't know, uh, 
a flat connection, the set of flat connections is in one one correspondence to uh, irreducible representations. And uh, the, uh, that connection, hmm? which one? By holonomy. So, so anyway, and so if we take integration over all M of this form, then so A is a two by two matrix, so we can take trace and integrate. We have a complex number, and that is called the Chan Simons invariant of the representation row. And the square bracket means the uh, uh, equivalence class in the character variety. You know that uh, uh, character variety is an <coughs> equivalence classes of uh, representations. So uh, um, anyway, for a closed three manifold, uh, the SL2C Chan Simons invariant is well known. And, uh, and uh, I think which one? Uh, this is, roughly speaking, this is a complex valued volume, a kind of volume. The, maybe the imaginary part is the volume of, uh, uh, yes. So if rho is, uh, if rho determines, uh, sorry, um, if M is a complete hyperbolic structure, and if rho determines its com uh, hyperbolic structure, then the Chan Simons invariant is uh, the imaginary part of the Chan Simons invariant is exactly the hyperbolic volume. So you can just uh, regard this as um, yes, modulus. Yeah, yeah. You can just think it is a kind of complex uh, volume. And it changes uh, if you change the uh, representation because the hyperbolic structure can change. Okay. So do you need a hyperbolic structure to start with? No, no, no. Um, this is for any three manifold. So in the case of the hyperbolic, uh, this defines the hyperbolic volume. But this defines this is defined for any three manifold. The mod Z there. Where? This one? Uh -huh. um, because uh, the real part is the so-called Chan Simons invariant, and uh, which is defined only modulo z. So um, uh, it is uh, a bit complicated if we want to define the Chan Simons invariant for uh, three manifolds with boundaries. So uh, especially, so I, I describe here uh, how to define the Chan Simons in the case where uh, M is a not complement. And uh, yes, strictly speaking, M is not a not complement. It is, M, M is a, uh, the complement of uh, uh, what? Interior of the regular neighborhood of the not. So M is S. Three minus interior of the regular neighborhood of K. So the boundary of M is uh, the torus. And uh, so, uh, if you have uh, if you have two such nodes, then so if so, you can define two. Uh, three manifolds with boundaries uh, M1 and M2, and then we glue the two together to make another uh, three manifold which has no boundary. So uh, this is uh, so uh, you, you don't need to read this. Uh, simply, if uh, you have two uh, not complements M and M prime, then the Chan Simons invariant of the glued uh, three manifold can be obtained by uh, the product of uh, Z and Z prime. So uh, the Chan Simons invariant of uh, not complement is uh, triple uh, first um, uh, complex number, second complex number, and the third is a kind of uh, Chan Simons invariant which defines the Chan Simons invariant of the glued three manifold, and the, the first two. Is it a glued condition. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Glued condition. 
Yes, so uh, we glue. So this one is a torus. So they have uh, meridian, uh, no, meridian and the longitude. So you have uh, meridian and the longitude. And uh, uh, we choose um, meridian <coughs> and the longitude oh, uh, in, say, uh, the boundary of M. And then we choose a rep given a representation. Then uh, the um, uh, we may assume that both are upper triangle, uh, upper triangular. The both of the image are upper triangulars, upper triangular. And we write it in this form: exponential of u over two, and the image of the longitude is exponential of v over two. Then uh, uh, we take log. We lift uh, the eigenvalue to uh, this this form, and this defines a kind of framing uh, to uh, the three manifold M. And similarly, we uh, define a kind of framing to the other three manifold, and we choose the same one. Remember that M pri prime uh, is uh, oriented oppositely, so to, to, if we glue the two together. We need to reverse the orientation of M2. So to do that, we need, uh, we need minus 1 here. So if we choose the same framing, and then we glue together, we get the Chan-Simons as the product of the last uh, ingredient. So this, the triple is caused uh, the Chan-Simons of the not complement. However, uh, we can choose uh, the framing rather freely because we take log, so there is ambiguity of 2 pi i or uh, say 4 pi i here. Okay, so the ambiguity of, of four, to, um, to remove such an ambiguity, we need to introduce this kind of uh, equivalence class. So uh, because we divide it by 4 pi i, so uh, if we add one into the meridian, uh, the chance sums changes like this. And if we change the meridian, no, no the longitude like this, then the chance sums change like this. And if we uh, change both the orientation, it doesn't matter to the chance sums. So this is the definition. So uh, the chance sums for the uh, not complement is just uh, framing, just taking framings uh, um, in, into account. And uh, uh, I, um, this is the small chan Simons, and capital chan Simons is this value. So we need to take again the exponential. So uh, the capital chan Simons is defined only modulo uh, pi squared times integers. And uh, remember that uh, our chance Simons for not complement <coughs> depends on the lift of uh, meridian and the longitude. So we write uh, u and v here. So strictly speaking, the chance Simons invariant for not complement uh, is defined uh, modulo pi squared and up to uh, uh, depending on the choice of lifts of meridian and the longitude. Now, uh, um, we'd like to know how to calculate. That is maybe more important. So uh, again, we are uh, thinking of a uh, not complement. And we are given, this time, we are given a path of representations, a set of representations parameterized by small t, which is uh, between 0 and y, like this. And we say. Uh, we choose the lift of meridian and the lift of longitude like this, and uh, chance, chance Simons as z sub t. Then uh, a theorem of Kirk and Klassen says that the ratio of the first one, first chance Simons and the last chance Simons is uh, calculated by integrating this one. 
Okay, so I, I'll give you an uh, example. Um, so so um, this is, so um, uh, Kate showed uh, a set of representations for figure eight knot, for the figure eight knot, but uh, uh, this is the um, torus knot. So there are uh, A re irreducible representations. So in the, uh, if we consider its character variety, it has A components. So character variety of X, look, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe this is in uh, algebraic geometry. <laughs> so we have A, um, X irreducible and uh, one, how do I die? One X of red reducible. And the uh, calculation is uh, not so hard. So just um, you can use uh, Mathematica, you can easily, <laughs> Mathematica yeah, uh, easily tells you the result. And uh, as Kate told, uh, we assume that x, uh, sorry, uh, before that, the pi one has this presentation, which is uh, uh, quite easy. And uh, we assume that x is upper triangular and y is um, lower triangular. Then this uh, two one uh, entry should be of this form. Now we calculate the chance times, uh, which uh, is due to Dubois and Kashaev. So, um, so we start with a reducible representation, and there is a trivial one. So we choose, we start, so um, uh, I want to use a Kalkin Klassen's method. So to do that, we need a path of representation. Uh, so we first, so, uh, and we'd like to know uh, the chance simons of, say, this point. To do that, uh, we can choose a path like this. And we call this path uh, alpha of S, and this one uh, beta of So where, where, where it is? So this is this corresponds to metabelian. Meta, yes. And remember that this corresponds to uh, zero of uh, the Alexander. So we, we, which can be easily seen that j just. Uh, solve this equation, uh, this to be zero. Then uh, that gives um, metabedia because uh, if this is zero, uh, the representation is uh, non abelian and reducible. The re re representation is upper triangular because um, this one vanishes. So we choose a uh, path of um, Abelian representation like this, uh, sorry, what is, what is omega? Oh, so <coughs> omega should be so, uh, so that this gives. Uh, so this vanishes. Oh. So when when u hmm? no when u is this value, then uh, no i need i. So o omega omega is exactly the zero of the Alexander. Then uh, if s is zero, this gives the trivial one. And if S is 1, this gives metabelian. So we connect trivial representation and metabelian representation. And then we switch to uh, 
uh, non abelian irreducible components, sorry, uh, irreducible components, and uh, which is given like is this. It, is it the same omega that you're using for both x and y for the alpha class? No, no. Um, there is no trivial one. Oh, no, no. I no. meant the abelian representation. Which one? The alpha s. Alpha s, yes. Are x and, x and y, uh, y, are they going to the same? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Because this oh, is Abelian, because this is Abelian. So when the re representation is Abelian, uh, both X and Y uh, go to the same thing. And uh, at the meta Abelian, we can take a path to a uh, given uh, irreducible representation. OK. So uh, alpha and beta together make one path, but we divide it into two so that we can apply uh, Kirk and Klassen's method easily. So uh, the point is that alpha 1, the end of alpha path and the start of beta path share the same trace. You see that if, if t is uh, 1, uh, this one is the same as uh, w. <laughs> so yeah, exactly like this. And in the character variety, these two coincide. But as representations, they are different. But uh, another point is that the, the chan sums invariant as a function on the character variety. So the chan sums of alpha 1 and beta 0 coincide. And uh, uh, we need longitude. And uh, longitude can be read off from the given uh, diagram easily. And if you can use computer again, then uh, the image of longitude is given like this. And uh, of course, if representation is abelian, the image of longitude is trivial identity. And uh, uh, even if the uh, representation is irreducible, uh, the, because the longitude and the meridian commute, uh, the image of longitude should be upper triangular because it commutes with the image of the meridian. Now, uh, um, so uh, because alpha is given like this, and uh, you know that the first entry and the second, the first should be a lift of meridian, and the second is a lift of longitude. So there are, the, there are uh, choices, but we choose a lift like this, lift like this, and di this. Zero is the lift of zero, sorry. Zero is the log lift of one. And for beta, especially for our longitude, we can choose L, integer L, later, because whenever L is an integer, this uh, gives nothing to exponential. This simply depends on log uh, branch of. So, so we, we will choose L later. Now, uh, Kirk and Klassen says that the, uh, so let me see, yeah. W is the transforms part of alpha path. So, uh, because uh, Kirk and Klassen's theorem says that the, the Chan Simons can be given by the integration of this one. So because in the uh, Abelian representation, V is just zero. So there's nothing. So it tells that the uh, Chan Simons doesn't change. And for the Z part, this part, uh, beta pass, uh, we can calculate uh, its value in the following way. So, uh, however, uh, we can use the equivalence uh, relation of this, this triple, and we get, so we, we change zero to this one, and the, the z0 is changed. So uh, we see that z, uh, z1 is given like this. Here uh, we have L. Now, uh, by, using, by introducing V like this, then uh, 
our transforms so transforms is uh, z1 um, or a log of <coughs> this one can be chosen so that this one so so uh, if we choose l if we are given l the capital transforms is defined like this with uh, where v is given like this so re remember that capital transforms depends on the choice of uh, lifts of meridian and the longitude. Now uh, we compare the two. So uh, from, from the calculation of um, uh, the color zones, we get SK. And from <coughs> the calculation of Chan Simons, we get CS. So we, we like to compare the t these two and to find a relation between the two. Then uh, so Guzai is our given uh, parameter for the color zones. And if we introduce small parameter, uh, sorry, parameter u here, then uh, and if we put v of k, a lift of uh, longitude like this, then the transforms under uh, sk is related in the following way, in this way. So th th this looks something like artificial, but anyway, we can uh, we can relate the transforms invariant and the SK function given by the color Jones polynomial. Next, uh, so um, this is the uh, exponential part of the limit of uh, asymptotic behavior of the color Jones polynomial. Uh, so next, we'd like to uh, study tau part. To do that, we need a uh, rather complicated um, so this is just the right master torsion, like uh, Stefan introduced. But uh, our chain complex is um, twisted by uh, representation law. So uh, we start with the uh, representation and consider its universal cover. Then, of course, the universal cover is, uh, is acted by pi 1. So uh, the, its chain complex can be regarded of, as z pi 1 module. And uh, uh, so this is a d algebra. Uh, d algebra SL two C is also a z pi one module via the adjoint action because we have uh, adjoint action of the representation. So given uh, element in pi one, we consider rho x inverse times a times rho a. So this gives an action on SL two C. So in this way, SL2C can be also regarded as a pi one module. So uh, we have two module structure. So we can tensor the chain complex, chain complex with the real algebra, SL2C. So uh, we think uh, the chain complex twisted by this um, adjoint action of the uh, given uh, representation and H star uh, denotes the homology group of that chain complex. And we will consider the Rydemeister torsion of this chain complex. So this is the definition. So um, because not complement is, uh, can be regarded as two-dimensional, uh, is homotopy equivalent to two-dimensional complex, uh, we can just consider uh, C2, C1, and C0. And the torsion is, so, uh, uh, D these are um, boundary operator. Uh, then, uh, let me see. Uh, this is the cycle, and Z uh, cycle, and uh, yes. So homology is just the uh, difference between uh, Z and yeah. Uh, look at C one. So uh, homology is just difference between Z and the image of. Uh, so uh, th this is called B, boundary. So uh, uh, if you look at C1, the whole space C1 is generated by the image of uh, boundary, this, and the lift of homology, and uh, the rest. So uh, we start with the... Um, let me see. Um, 
is CI. What is CI? So uh, let me see. So we regard the um, not complement as a two-dimensional complex uh, with one. Uh, so this is C0, and we have some bouquet. So this is this is C1, and we attach some uh, three or uh, two two disks. These are C2. So we can choose um, uh, basis of C0 and C1 and C2 like this. Uh, so these are determined by uh, uh, pi 1. So you know that we, uh, we have pi 1 is generated by C G1 up to G C R uh, subject to relations R and up to uh, n minus 1. So C2 can be regarded as a relation, and uh, C1 can be regarded as generators, and C0 is just a point. So we, so C, C, C0, C1, and C2 are these generator systems, and uh, we choose um, B and H, then we can define the torsion like this. Here, the uh, bar means the uh, base change matrices. And uh, um, a difficult part is that um, usually we consider right master torsion where the chain complex is acyclic. But in this case, in our case, it is uh, usually not acyclic. So in that case, we choose uh, lifts of, no, not a lift. It does not depend on lift, but, but we need to choose a uh, basis for homologies. So the, our right master torsion, again, depends on the choice of uh, homology basis. So I, I'll show you a concrete example here. Uh, so in this case, uh, general uh, torus knot is too complicated. So I, I'll show you just uh, a trefoil. And in this case, um, there is a, a unique irreducible representation. And I will calculate the uh, Leiden master torsion. So uh, there are two generators, x and y, and one relation given like this. And uh, we choose a uh, usual basis like this for uh, the algebra, SL2C. And uh, we, we are considering um, um, SL2C, uh, twisted by SL2C. So uh, there are uh, three generators for uh, we start with C0. So if we pick, pick up some base point, then uh, in the universal cover, we need to choose one uh, lift of the base point and tensor with E, H, and F. And there are uh, similar uh, generators for C1 and C2. And uh, when and the boundary, uh, the map from C2 to C1, the second uh, two-dimensional boundary is given by uh, this Fox uh, calculus. So we can calculate the boundary easily if we know these uh, things. And uh, ah, yes, like this. And the one-dimensional boundary is given by this. So. Uh, so essentially, uh, our um, Leidenmeister torsion is something similar to the one given by Stefan. So it is something like the R D X det divided by det of say y minus identity. Yes, it is something like that. But of course, this case is uh, rather complicated. And in our case, uh, so capital X is, uh, uh, is given uh, like this, and uh, capital Y is given like this. So this comes from this adjoint action of 
uh, dr of dx. So uh, we can see that the two-dimensional homology and the one-dimensional homology is just one-dimensional. And there's uh, the, the, and the zeroth homology vanishes. And we, we that always, so these matrices are non-singular. So we, which one? The ones you showed for x and y. Right there. Yes, yes. One. Yes. So so so, so h is zero is one. H zero is zero. Yeah, but isn't that always going to happen from your construction? So um in other words, why 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 go through all this trouble to get this model? Isn't that or is that it's necessary? Is it my, my question is it necessary to no, uh, so sorry, I can't understand the qu okay, question. Okay, no, okay. so um, this is sorry, this is specific uh, calculation, and uh, um, the twisted chain, twisted homology is very complicated. It heavily depends on uh, representation. Anyway, uh, in our case. Um, uh, H0 is trivial, and H1 and H2 are one-dimensional. Now, uh, because these homology survives, so we need to choose one generator for each H1 and H2. And for, uh, so this is the result. Uh, there is a, a kind of natural choice for uh, H2. Uh, we can choose a fundamental class of the boundary as the natural choice. And the P here is, uh, is also natural. And for first homology, we choose uh, meridian. Uh, meridian is x. So th this is a kind of artificial. So w we choose meridian as the uh, basis our Leidenmeister torsion is given by plus or minus 2. And in general, uh, for torus not of type Two to a plus one, the result is something like this, and there's a uh, um, a formula is known for, uh, for example, uh, the figure eight knot, but in general the calculation is complicated. And uh, yes, um, Yamaguchi, Kitano, and the, uh, they they used uh, the twisted Alexander polynomial. Uh, this is, I think, this is the same as Stefan explained. So in this case, uh, the chain complex is, uh, is acyclic, so the calculation is uh, easier. Anyway, so, uh, so um, in general, we can show that the tau here is just the square root of uh, Reidemeister torsion. So uh, as the conclusion, we see that in the case of the torus knot of this type, uh, the asymptotic behavior of the color Jones uh, is given by the Alexander polynomial and the Chan Simons invariant associated with uh, the meridian and the longitude and uh, the Leidenmeister torsion. Note that uh, SK, uh, so um, there appear a uh, summation, and the summation K depends on uh, Guzai and uh, k is between the two uh, contours. So th this is um, the case of the um, uh, torus knot. So we see that uh, this is a kind of generalization of the volume conjecture. So uh, you know that uh, torus knot is non-hyperbolic. And uh, we are, again, interested in uh, hyperbolic case. To do that, uh, we study, uh, oh, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Before going to hyperbolic, uh, we uh, show the result by uh, Kashev and Tilkonen and Dubois and Kashev. Um, as I told you, on Wednesday, uh, Kashev Tilkonen proved the conjecture for the case of the uh, hyperbolic, sorry, for the case of um, a torus knot. And uh, Dubois and Kashev uh, studied uh, the formula given by Kashev himself and the Tilkonen uh, precisely, then, then concludes that uh, a more precise asymptotic is polynomial.
times this one. And the polynomial means this is n to the uh, three halves. And uh, this is just a summation similar to the previous one. So uh, again, uh, there appear uh, irreducible representations. But in this case, uh, the growth of n is polynomially. So if we take log and divide it by n, everything disappears. So if we consider only volume conjecture, uh, we cannot see these types of uh, precise asymptotics. So this is a kind of uh, generalization or um, refinement of the uh, volume conjecture. In the previous one, we put up, we change 2 pi i to 2 pi i plus u. So this is a kind of uh, parameterization of the volume conjecture. So we see that there are two kinds of generalizations. One is refinement, and the other is parameterization. Now we go to the figure 8 knot. So, I, ah. <laughs> so um, this is the uh, 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 formula by Habiro and Le. Uh, we, we change it slightly. So this looks like uh, Q series. <laughs> And uh, we introduce a uh, quantum dialogue in a different form. I think um, this can be uh, written as infinite product, but I'm not sure. So anyway, uh, this uh, integral formula is given by Fadev. Uh, so and the integration is to avoid the origin just a bit above the origin. And uh, why it is called quantum dialogism? One reason is just uh, asymptotic behavior of this one. If gamma is pi over n, uh, this is given by the dialogue like this. Okay. And another reason, uh, another impo important uh, feature of the function S dialogue is that one. Uh, so um, <coughs> one plus e to the something times s gamma of z plus gamma is given by s gamma of z minus gamma. So if we apply this, we have this one. So 1 plus e to the something is given by the ratio of s gamma, two s gammas. And the, the difference between the two s gamma is just the difference of the two indexes. So, so, so um, this is a, con a kind of uh, uh, this looks like uh, 1 minus q times 1 minus q squared times 1 minus q cubed, or something like that, uh, is given by the ratio of this one. <coughs> so uh, we can, by introducing this uh, quantum dialogism, we can change the uh, color Jones into uh, more uh, analytic summation. Okay. So if we introduce this g function, then, uh, so, ah, sorry. So we, we, we'd like to turn this summation into integral, as I told you yesterday. So uh, if we want to prove the volume conjecture, uh, we need to change summation into in integral. This is one uh, way. So uh, we pick up. We, we use residue theorem uh, because tangent has uh, poles along real line here. So we uh, integrate tangent times g function around this one. Then we know the uh, residues of tangent. So uh, this summation can be replaced with this integration, where the path is just uh, uh, this uh, parallelogram. Okay. And uh, tangent, so wh what is tangent? In a complex analysis, tangent is, uh, is something like constant. <laughs> when we go to uh, far, far away above or go down, then uh, because tangent can be given like this, then if uh, we go above, then it go approaches to i. And if we go down, it approaches minus i. So 
in this integral, tangent will disappear when we consider the line along here. So uh, roughly, tangent disappears. So we only have uh, integral of g function. And uh, uh, we have this formula. Uh, capital G is just replaced with this one. And uh, uh, as before, uh, G is written in terms of S, S sub gamma. And S sub gamma is the quantum dialogue algorithm. And it is asymptotically the same as dialogue. So a small g function can be, is asymptotically equivalent to uh, exponential of n times this function. And we need to take integral. So we finally have, uh, so th this is uh, the essential part of the color Jones. So what we want to do is just evaluate this value. Uh, yes, p minus. And p minus is starting at 0 and go along this line and go this way and go back to 1. OK. Uh, so p, p is, p minus is here. And uh, if we plot the, uh, I think this is real part of phi. So uh, we want to apply the complex version of the saddle point method. So uh, by Cauchy's theorem, we change the path of integration from here to anywhere. And uh, this is the saddle. So we, we, want, we want to replace this contour with this one. And because there's no poles, this integration is exactly the same as this. So look, so this is the saddle. So the, the, the same saddle point method, but in this case, we apply a complex valued function. Then the integration along the p minus is the same as integration along this blue line. And the integration is uh, just take the value of this one. And as I told you yesterday, uh, if we apply Gauss, Gaussian integral, we have a second derivative here, and the square root of n here, like that. So we have more precise uh, asymptotics in the case of the uh, figure eight knot. And this is a result of Yokota and myself. And again, uh, we have, uh, uh, sorry, um, I will tell you. So this is uh, quite similar to the case of the trefoil. And so uh, this can be uh, by using uh, lift of the image of longitude, we can replace this term uh, uh, as um, Chan Simons invariant. And this one is nothing but uh, the uh, square root <coughs> of uh, Leidemeister torsion associated with uh, the representation. So that I will tell you um, also. Um, I run out of time. So um, the representation of uh, figure not is given like this. And here, u appears as the parameter. And, uh, and the u, so um, this representation defines, uh, oh, I, I'll skip. Oh, and here's the calculation similar to the case of the trefoil. And we can calculate the torsion like this. By, oh, um, uh, area we have x and y in the case of the figure, quite similar. And sigma. So, um, so uh, as in the case of the trefoil or the uh, torus knot, SU defines the Chan Simons invariant associated with the meridian and the longitude. And tau is the Leidemeister torsion. Bo and S, Chan Simons and the Leidemeister both associated with the um, representation, irreducible representations, and which sends meridian to the e to the u half. And uh, 
in the case of u is zero, this is the case of the hyperbolic, sorry, volume conjecture. Uh, this was given by, uh, proved by Anderson and Hansen. Uh, this is a uh, refinement of the volume conjecture. And uh, here's the uh, parameterization of the volume conjecture in the case of a hyperbolic knot. So we, our conjecture is that uh, here, so, sorry, in the exponential term, we have something like Carrad Jones, uh, sorry, something like Chan Simons associated with the meridian and the longitude. And it is defined by a uh, representation uh, given by u, parameter u. And the parameter u is also used to define <coughs> the right dimensional torsion. So uh, the interesting thing is that in the case of the torus knot, um, it is a sum of uh, representations. But in the case of uh, hyperbolic knot, they appear only single uh, term. So our speculation <laughs> is very rough, one, but uh, uh, in general, I think uh, the asymptotics of the Carl Jones is uh, like one of Alexander plus sum of representations. But I don't know. Uh, it, it is a very, very uh, rough speculation. So um, I, I'd like to say that uh, if we study the Carl Jones, asymptotic of the Carl Jones in the left hand side, uh, we need analysis. And in the right hand side, we need something topology or algebra. So. Um, and so uh, I'd like to know what happens to the right-hand side. I'd like to know the right-hand side in terms of topology. OK, uh, I stop here. Thank you. So um, um, Chan Simons is complex volume, yes, yes. And uh, we know, uh, so. Um, Somehow the deform parameter is going on the denser. Yes, so um, this is, so um, due to Yoshida, uh, we can, so if parameter, so, uh, okay, uh, U defines uh, incomplete hyperbolic structure in general. And uh, sometimes it defines, uh, it fills in uh, solid torus. Then it is called generalized uh, den surgery. And the volume of that uh, den surgery free manifold can be given by Yoshida's formula. Oh, no, no, no. The volume itself is given by uh, Neumann and Zagie. And uh, the Chan Simons part is given by Yoshida. Together with, we have a complex volume, which is the Chan Simons. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.